Welcome back, fuckers. All right, today we're going to run through how to do a BVR engagement in F-18 Hornet using the AIM-120 AMRAAM missile against a uh, single target. Uh, we haven't spawned in yet. We're just going to quickly run through some of the uh, controls, keybinds that I find useful okay, to help make your life as easy as possible. So first things first, let's go through them. Adjust controls. So the first one you want is right MDI push button number five. All right, right MDI push button five, which is this guy right there. Right MDI push button five. And again, if you have your radar on the left MFD, it will be left MDI push button five. So whatever button or whatever M yeah, MFD you use for your radar, make sure it coincides with the actual push button for that display. Okay, and what that does is gonna let us change from range wall scan to track wall scan. All right, so TWS, RWS. So rather than clicking it with your finger, I've got it bound so I can just press a button on my HOTAS and it cycles between the two, okay? So that's option one or bind number one. Uh, the next one you're gonna need is gonna be, uh, where are we? We want radar elevation control up, radar elevation control down. Okay, and what that's gonna do is change your radar elevation and right, you can see the two numbers there so quick rundown that top number is the altitude in feet thousands of feet 41,000 feet and the bottom number is 22 which is 22,000 feet so our radar is looking between 22,000 feet and 41,000 feet in that sweep range All right so if we had a target that was above 41,000 feet our radar would not see it and if it was below 22,000 feet our radar wouldn't see it so it's very useful to have uh, radar elevation quickly uh, accessible to to slew your radar up and down as contacts appear on your SA page or you get a call out from AWACS you can quickly slew your radar to make it look in the right direction right in the right spot uh, so that's that uh, the next one is going to be uh, right MDI push button 13 Okay, so we're going to have that one, which will be this guy right here. And this applies when you're in TWS mode. So you've got two different versions. So you've got TWS Auto and TWS Manual. Okay, and we'll go through the two different types in a second and how to use TWS most effectively for me. Okay, and again, I'm not saying this is the, uh, the be all end all way to do it. This is where I found helps or is the most easiest and less complicated, confusing way to target lock up targets in TWS mode and uh, destroy them, shoot them down in PVP. So you're gonna have that, okay? So you want to be able to switch between TWS manual, TWS manual and TWS auto modes. And then the final ones is you want right MDI push button 11, right MDI push button 12, which is gonna change your range, okay? So you can bump your radar up 160, 80. You can just adjust the radar range off your HOTAS, okay? Just nice things to have rather than having to come down and like click on buttons manually. All right, so they're the ones that you want. Uh, and as always, you are gonna use throttle designated controller to press to lock up a target and undesignate slash nodal steering switch to cycle targets or to undesignate a target. All right, uh, and you've obviously got the gun trigger second detent. That's uh, what you used for firing air-to-air -air weapons so the gun and all air-to-air -air missiles is used uh, using the gun trigger okay weapon releases for uh, ground ground munitions essentially so that's that um i think we've covered everything now uh and obviously yeah your sensor sensor of interest so we've got sensor select left right aft forward and depress Okay, so now what we're going to do, we're going to spawn in a enemy aircraft. In he goes. All right, let's bump it up. We've got a range, or we've got an aircraft there. So what we can do to IFF that target, because at the moment, that guy is an unknown. Okay, it's a yellow Hafu, which means it's an unknown contact, because uh, we don't have any information. So we're going to try and IFF it and see what it is. So. Again, the control to IFF, you need sensor control switch to press. Okay, you need that button there to do an IFF check. And you also need your IFF 
turned on. All right, and now let's quickly pause it here. So you can see we've got uh, still a yellow contact because we haven't IFF'd it itself, but on the bottom there, it's got a chevron. So when it's a chevron or a circle, okay, half circle on the bottom, that means you're getting a an IFF from a donor aircraft. And in our case, it's going to be from the AWACS. The AWACS is saying that it's a hostile, but we haven't confirmed it ourselves, which is why it's still yellow. Okay, so we can, you can essentially take that as yes, that is a, uh, a hostile aircraft, but it's always a good habit to IFF it yourself and just double check. Because sometimes, you know, weird things happen and you end up shooting down friendlies for no reason because you were too lazy to IFF. So make sure you use your, make sure your IFF's turned on on the UFC and you're going to press sensor select depressed IFF. So we're going to unpause now. All right, we've pressed it and we've gotten ourselves a contact. Okay, so now what we're going to do, we're going to go press TDC to press once on that guy. And we're going to come out of active pause. So you can see we've got range here. So we'll uh, we'll pause it here just so we don't close the distance too much. And we'll have a look at the HUD. All right, so we've got a 29 nails. All right, which is uh, telling us that we've got a an aircraft. A MiG-29 nails but we don't know if it's a uh, MiG-29 or an SU-27 or an SU-33 they all have the same 29 uh, RWR contact we've got the the diamond okay that's confirming that it is a hostile off of our IFF check and it's got also a little chevron above it so the little chevron above means that it's also been IFF by another uh, coalition aircraft either a Hornet or the AWACS itself. So it's been doubly checked that yes, this is a hostile. So if you had say a box and it had a Chevron above the box, all right, you've got conflicting uh, information. You need to IFF just to make sure. So it should match, okay? It should have a Chevron above if it's getting painted by the AWACS. Uh, and now we've got some ranging information. So we've got our close rate, 1200 knots combined closure. So my airspeed, plus his airspeed flying at each other is 1200 knots. We've also got range to target, so 59.2 nautical miles till our range. Uh, we've got our airspeed here, 365 indicated. Our MAC is MAC 1.0, and we've got our ranging information on the HUD. So this circle is where we want to put that uh, aiming dot. Okay, as long as that aiming dot is inside this circle, your AMRAM is effectively uh, in the best possible uh, firing parameters once you get in range. Now we've got some stuff. So we've got our ranging marker here. Okay, so as you get closer, this is going to roll or unwind on the inside of the circle. Okay, until you get to the merge. So as this thing moves, you're going to go through. We've got some uh, stuff on the outside of the circle that we need to look at. So this square, okay, is your max aero launch limit. So effectively, if we fire when the uh, the ranging cue gets to here. We can fire, and it's like at max max range. All right, we're not going to have much chance to shoot to kill, especially if they maneuver against us. Um, but that's our max error. The next one is your your R max range. Okay, your maximum range for a non-maneuvering target. So if you fire once that ranging cue unwinds and gets to that triangle there, uh, that is going to not guarantee a kill, but if they go defensive and try and defeat your missile, it's going to, you know, they'll have a pretty good chance of defeating said missile. The next one is your no escape zone. Okay. And then your last triangle is your arm min. Okay. So minimum range to fire the AMRAM ram to hit. So you, if, if you want to kill an aircraft, you really want to wait till you get to that second triangle. Okay, is where you want to be taking your shots from because you're giving your missile the best chance of hitting the target. If you fire between those two, okay, it's more of a posturing shot. So they will have a chance to do to defeat the missile by either notching or you know turning cold. But either way, you're making them have to react to your shot. So sometimes you don't want to kill them with the first missile, you want to put them on the defensive. So it's you know it's also a viable tactic to fire an AMRAM early with no intention of trying to kill them. Okay, just purely to put them off 
so that they have to react and go defensive so you can keep pressing and get into your uh, your best chance shot because if they're not pointing their nose at you and you're still pointing your nose at them you can close the distance get your range in queue to the no escape and then take the kill shot with the amram so that is that so as we unpause now we're just gonna we're in full afterburner we're gonna cruise along we've got old mate locked up in tws mode all right so now let's pause again so many pauses but it needs to be done so we're in tws manual mode what happens in TWS manual mode, as I move my TDC cursor around, my radar sweep is going to follow wherever my cursor goes. All right, and I would do this, but uh, I want to kind of explain it before because this is going to happen pretty quick because we're coming at each other fairly fast here. So if I was to move my TDC cursor over to here, I would lose lock on the contact, okay, because it's in TWS manual. So wherever my radar or my TDC cursor is looking on the radar, my radar sweep will follow. And also, my radar elevation I have to control manually. So if this guy, for example, he's at Angel's 31.7 right now, so 31,700 feet is his altitude. If he was to, for some reason, uh, dive to the deck and get underneath 12,000 feet, even though I've got him, uh, my radar sweep's looking at him, if he goes under 12,000 feet, I'm gonna lose lock on him as well because yeah, he's dropped underneath my radar elevation so you have to do in tws manual you've got to one make sure that you keep the uh, radar sweep over the target and two you have to manage your radar elevation manually to keep it at his radar elevation so if they dive or they climb and they get above or below your uh, radar elevation there you will lose lock and if you fight a missile uh, the missile will lose guidance and then you know there's every chance it's going to go stupid and you will not hit target so what i like to do once you've picked out your target, uh, you're going to go ahead and you're going to press right MDI, push button 13, and switch from manual to auto. And what auto does will uh, keep lock, keep following this guy as best it can. So if he dives, it's going to follow him down. The ele radar elevation will follow him down to the deck. If he climbs above 55,000, which is very unlikely, but if he did, it would follow him up. So it would keep the radar elevation at him the aircraft or the target's elevation and also if I maneuver and go to put uh, which I'm going to do in a second I'm going to take this target and I'm going to put it on my left uh, left radar limit so I'm going to just turn to the left and I'm going to keep flying until that target marker is right on the edge of my radar okay it's called cranking you either crank to the left or crank to the right and the reason you do a crank is because you want to put as uh, much lead on their missile as possible. If they fire at you early, it's gonna make their missile have to pull lead and bleed a heap of its energy off. All right, so you wanna crank and then turn in for your shot when you get to your, your said range. So that will, auto mode will keep all that stuff done automatically, which is sweet. Okay, so again, I'll show you what I'm talking about here. So if I move the TW, or so the TDC cursor over to here, you can see we've dropped lock. Okay, because my radar is following this guy. If I move it back over, it's going to pick him up again. So now I'm going to go to TWS auto mode. We're at 50 miles, so we're going to keep flying at him here. Bump the radar down to 40 mile. So you can see our ranging queue is unwinding slowly. We're in full afterburner. We're getting AWACS callouts here. flying straight at him close rate 1300 knots so he's flying super fast at us we're flying super fast at him now this uh, particular aircraft is an su-27 so he has semi-active missiles so a fox one so he has to keep lock on me at all times so now we're getting a shoot queue all right so we're at max range for a uh our max range essentially for our AMRAM and because we're so fast and we're at altitude 29,700 we're getting a shoot queue at 35.5 nautical mile okay if you're down on the deck and flying slow this range is going to be way way closer than 35 mile okay so the the shoot queue and the range to target is totally dependent on your altitude your airspeed their airspeed and your uh, your aspect to them. So because we were both flying at each other hot, and again I didn't explain that, that little uh, that little guy there, 
that arrow that is the direction our target is flying so he's flying straight at us and as he maneuvers that is going to move around in relation to our aircraft so if this arrow was pointing at the top it would mean that that guy is actually flying away from us he's got his his tail to us and he's flying in the same direction as we are away from us okay so that is totally dependent so your shoot cue is going to be totally dependent again on altitude range uh, and your closure rate okay as well as their altitude range and closure rate so keep that in mind it's going to be a, a sliding scale it's not always going to be at 35 mile it's not always going to be you know <laughs> perfect conditions where they fly at you at fly at you hot especially when you're doing pvp because they're going to do exactly what i'm about to do so now we're at 35 mile he doesn't have us locked up yet we're not getting a radar lock all right because our rwr isn't beeping at us so when we get to, we're going to go 20, there we go, he's locking us now, he's fired from 30 miles. So we're going to go ahead and crank to the left, and we're going to put him, come on, don't, bastard, radar's still having some issues, kind of wigs out right now. So we're cranking to the left, putting on a right beam radar. So we're making his missile do a lot of work. So remember, he's got to keep lock on us. Let's keep cruising there. Now we're going to turn in now, 20 mile. So again, I'm looking for my ranging cue. As we turn in, I'm going to take a shot as soon as we get on him. Fox 3, 18 mile. Now we're going to crank to the other way. Pop a couple of chaff out. Keeping him right on the beam three two one and missile's gone active he's going defensive i guess we could technically uh push on him here let's have a look missile's chasing and there's a dead flanker Or is it not? Maybe not. Let's turn back in. Let's have a look. No, he's still up. All right, we'll lock him up again. Go back to auto mode. So he's 12 mile. He's hit the deck. No, he splashed. He splashed. Just ejected. So we hit him. He is down. Okay, target is... Whoa. Tracker I just wigged out right then. Uh, what the hell is going on there? I'll right, pause it now. Um, cool. So that is, in a nutshell, how you do a BVR engagement with the Hornet. So bear in mind, at the moment, as of end of September 2020, there is issues with the radar. It still uh, kind of wigs out. The radar, radar sweep will kind of freeze at the moment, and it will lose lock because it's not... Uh, they're still having some issues with the radar, so they're working through it. So if you're watching this at a later date, this might not be a problem, but at the moment it is. So just be aware that um, I mean, sometimes you will lose lock with your radar in auto mode. So just keep an eye on it. Don't uh, think, oh, I'm in auto mode. That is going to keep him locked up no matter what, because it does have issues still. Uh, but that's pretty much what you... Why are you doing that? Weird fucking track right now that was pause it um but yeah that's how much how you'd pretty much do it so you'd find your target once you've got him acquired in tws manual mode switch it to auto to make uh, your life easier so then you can maneuver and go ahead and notch left or right and you don't have to worry about adjusting the uh, radar elevation and keeping your cursor tracking him across and it's going to free you up to actually look around and uh check out for other threats coming at you once you've uh gotten into your range um yeah you want to fire so most people will wait in the hornet if you're at altitude which we were so 20,000 to 30,000 plus um 20 mile it's probably where you want to take a shot from your first shot from 20 mile and then if you can force and defensive keep pressing on them and um you know within 15 mile is a pretty good shot for an ammo especially at altitude but again it depends on 
who you're fighting. If you're fighting an AI aircraft, they're not the smartest compared to a player, but if you're fighting an actual PvP in a PvP server, remember they're gonna be doing the same shit to you. So they're gonna be flying at you as fast as they can. They'll be cranking to the left or right, and they'll be turning in to launch their missile at you in their best parameters. And they've also probably shot an early ammo out to put you defensive. So, you know, it becomes a, uh, a game of cat and mouse. Who can outwit the, uh, the other fighter? is what we're after cool guys so i hope that made sense i hope um that helped you out with bvr engagement practice against ai to start um and then once you have gotten used to kind of managing the radar switching between manual and auto mode um then you can have a crack with your mates practice doing bvr engagement set up a, a mission where you can just kind of spawn in against each other and practice doing that technique Okay, notching, uh, sorry, cranking, and then turning in, taking the shot, crank the other way. And then as soon as your missile goes active, remember the, the countdown timer will kick in once you fire the ammo. As soon as it goes to zero, the missile is effectively fire and forget. Okay, you can turn cold and get the hell out of there. So if they've launched on you, you have to keep your radar lock until your missile goes active. As soon as it goes active, you can just get out. Okay, split S, which means dive down to the deck, uh, full afterburner, pump out chaff, and make sure uh, you get the hell out of there try and extend away and pray to god that your missile hits him if it doesn't then um you need to think about recommitting at some point and hope that he went cold on you as well and then restart the fight Alrighty, guys i hope that helped if it did make sure you hit the like video uh the like button on the video and if you haven't already give the subscribe button a hit as well and subscribe to the youtube channel it helps me out a bunch and lastly, if you haven't already, come on by and uh, check me out on Twitch. I stream Monday to Fridays most weeks at Australian Western Standard Time, 1300 or 1 p.m. in the afternoon for a couple of hours every weekday when I'm around. Uh, yeah, so if you haven't already, come on by. Say good day, ask any questions you got live on stream, and I'll do my best to answer them. Alrighty, peeps. Catch you fuckers on the next one.